Hello, everybody. My name is Jana Weiss. I'm the online student life coordinator. And thank you for joining us with another Eagle chat with counseling and ADA services. And together we have a wonderful speaker today. His name is Patrick Wynn. He is a counselor with HCC, a lead counselor, and he's absolutely wonderful. Please give him a few minutes to get started, and he's going to tell you all about counseling, ADA, and basic needs. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Jenna. How are you? Uh, hi. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick Nguyen. I'm one of the counselors here at Houston Community College. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick, and we have a really quick presentation on counseling and ability services. All right. <clears throat> So um, what we'll go over today is a brief overview of counseling, counseling services, um, some resources that are available to students, where to find us, um, and then stress, maybe stress during the holidays or stress uh, year round. I know the holidays are coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> it always seems like uh, when you go to the store, things are just popping up. Holidays are just popping up sooner rather than later, right? All right, our mission for the um, counseling department is to provide holistic support for students pursuing their educational goals. Uh, we do this with a full range of professional services um, available to our enrolled students. We have about 22, 24 full-time licensed counselors. So we're either licensed professional counselors, licensed social workers, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed psychologists. Um, counselors, we're going to be a little bit different from advisors, okay? So uh, a lot of students make this mistake, but advisors will help you with degree plans, transfer plans, what courses to take, placement testing, um, uh, how do I register for classes? I have this registration error, things like that, okay? Counselors, we're a little bit different. We are all licensed mental health professionals. Uh, we provide time-limited, short-term uh, mental health counseling free of charge to students. So there's no insurance, no copay whatsoever. It's it's all free. Um, and we work with students with anxiety, depression, coping skills, stress, loss, grief, uh, things like that. And we also work with students with accommodations. Okay, um, Accommodations can range anywhere from, uh, 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 can, can range from a, uh, can help students with a documented disability, um, and it can range anywhere from maybe giving you extra time uh, in your classes or in your um, uh, in your assignments or in your exams. So what we try to do is put you on an even playing field with other students. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, accommodations also. And we also work with students um, who have basic needs concerns, housing issues, financial issues, job issues, health care, um, food insecurity, things like that. So we provide, um, we also provide accommodations, career counseling, academic skills, outreach programming, consultation, and crisis intervention. Uh, we also work with students on uh, Title IX pregnancy and domestic violence accommodations. So um, if you are pregnant, let us know. Um, we're not going to go around campus and say, hey, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, so if you are pregnant, let us know. Nobody should be asking you if you're pregnant or not. Uh, so uh, let us know if you need those types of accommodations. If you are in a domestic violence situation and you need accommodations, you need a safe place to go, uh, let us know. Counselors can uh, connect you with resources and also connect you with accommodations uh, in your classes. Now, we also provide uh, Title IX um, uh, related counseling um, for both uh, both parties um, in a Title IX case. So that can be uh, uh, the uh, the uh, alleged or the accused, I mean, the, the victim or the accused. Okay. Uh, so ACC provides time-limited short-term personal counseling, typically around three to five sessions a semester. But, you know, work with your counselor. They can sometimes provide a little bit more sessions depending on your need. Um, and it's for currently enrolled students. So as long as you are 
registered for an HCC class that semester, you can um, work with a counselor. Uh, the purpose of the short term uh, counseling is to really focus in on the personal issues that are preventing you from achieving your academic success. For longer term ca uh, counseling and other supportive services, uh, counselors can definitely help you uh, make those appropriate connections and referrals and um, re uh, community resources. All right. We also work with students to help them with medical compassionate withdrawals. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, it's you're taking a course and it's already past the last day of withdrawal and you have an extenuating circumstance. You had a medical issue, you lost your job, your family had a medical issue um, or you had a car accident, you can't go to school anymore anything like that, you know, let us know, let your advisor know, let uh, a counselor know, and we can possibly sometimes uh, uh, help you withdraw from that class, okay? Um, and the withdrawal is a W, so it doesn't count against your uh, GPA. And you can actually withdraw from classes even though, even after the grades have been posted, okay? So you can withdraw up to a year after the grades have been posted. So talk to a counselor, the, they can um, talk to you about the different requirements. Uh, we work with at-risk students, so a lot of our students are on probation, suspension, continued probation. Uh, we also do a lot of outreach events, um, uh, domestic violence, drug, alcohol, mental health accommodations. Um, right after this session, I actually have a welcome back week that we're doing an outreach event. So we're constantly doing events. Look for our table for some of these events and look for these events. You can check out the HCC uh, um, events calendar, or you can also check out the HCC um, counseling webpage. We have a list of events on there too. And we also work with students on basic needs and we have a basic needs uh, website um, at hccs.edu slash cares. Uh, it has tons of different websites from, you know, how, in, how to pay less for home internet, how to apply for health care, how to apply for housing, long-term, short-term housing, um, how to get utility help, uh, how to get food help, right, um, to, to save you on some groceries. And if uh, there may not be a specific help or your specific specific need, um, but what we want to do is provide some help in other areas. Okay, so let's say for instance you got in a car accident, you need a little bit of money to fix your car, uh, or or maybe your car broke down. Okay, um, there's not a lot of grants out there to fix your car, but if you can maybe get some groceries at a campus or maybe get some cleaning supplies or uh, school supplies from the campus or uh, maybe get some other emergency type help, then you can save that money that you would normally spend for groceries to fix your car, okay? So there's gonna be some um, basic needs uh, uh, resources that are more readily available and we really highly encourage that you check the website and check our Eagle markets um, for uh, to, 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 to see what we have. All right, to receive accommodations, accommodations is for students with a documented disability. Um, it impairs, which limits uh, major, and it also uh, impairs major life activities and it imposes an educational limitation. Um, this occurs when the limitation prevents the student from fully benefiting from the class activities, services offered by the college uh, to non-disabled students. Um, and what we want to do is put you on an even playing field with other students, okay? Uh, for instance, let's say you're going through a medical, uh, a medication change, and that medication change is making you a little groggy, okay? Uh, and that medication could be, you know, for ADHD or ADD or depression or, or whatever. Um, and it's making you a little bit groggy in the morning. And the morning is also the time that you have your classes and you have an exam that day. So what we can possibly do in the accommodations office to allow you to take the exam at a different day at a different time. So maybe allow you to take it in the afternoon in our testing office, something like that. Uh, let's say, for instance, you have um, uh, uh, attention uh, issues, right? So it's hard for you to pay attention inside uh, the 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 classroom while you're taking the exam. So we can have you possibly take the exam in our testing office where it's a lot quieter um, and there's less people around uh, to, 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 
to mess with your attention or to 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 affect your attention. Uh, so accommodations, if you need accommodations, let us know. Talk to an accommodations counselor. Uh, we do recommend that you work with an accommodations counselor um, at the beginning of the semester um, or as soon as possible so we can provide you an accommodations letter so that you can then provide it to your uh, teacher. Accommodations. Um, <clears throat> can range from anywhere from short term accommodations to like longer term accommodations. OK. All right now again, we provide a holistic approach. Uh, we have ongoing mental health workshops. We actually have some suicide prevention workshops uh, this upcoming semester. Um, we have several counselors who are trained in with the QPR uh, Institute to provide um, that sort of training so that you can talk to somebody who could be suicidal. OK, um, there's a lot of stigma, a lot of questions. Um, there's a lot of myths out there. Um, you know, one of the myths is, you know, if you talk to somebody about suicide, they're more likely to commit suicide. That is a myth. OK, they want you to talk to them, but you have to be able to to talk to them in a um, non judgmental, um, uh, empathetic way. And we kind of go over how to talk to uh to friends, family, coworkers, colleagues, uh, classmates who could be suicidal. Okay, we also uh, have substance use, coping skills, depression, anxiety workshops, uh, and we bring in uh, speakers um, from the college or from outside the college. We also have counselors' corners, uh, so we have a set of videos to talk about a range of different issues, and we also have the basic needs questionnaire, which is a really good questionnaire to kind of. Uh, work your way through and see what uh, needs you, what resources that you're looking for. And after you submit the basic needs questionnaire, um, you're automatically emailed those resources. So it's kind of like a guide for basic needs. All right, so where to find us? So the best way to connect with a counselor is to email us, go to our website, um, hccs.edu slash counseling. Um, you're going to see a lot of mental health resources, um, uh, counselors, contact information, and just send us an email. Give us a call and we can set up an appointment with you. All right. Some other additional helpful uh, information. Um, if you see somebody um, with concerning behavior, maybe they're sad, they're suicidal, they've, they've talked about... Um, uh, hurting themselves or killing themselves. You just need, you, know, you think that they just need extra help. Um, then submit a report. And uh, I know the website is a little, little long, but if you go to the HCC's webpage at the top right search bar, just type in uh, concerning behavior or a report an incident or a report of maxiant. Um, you can actually re uh, make a report um, so that a counselor or uh, the college can outreach to this person. Um, if you would like to make a report for Title IX, sexual gender uh, based misconduct, other discrimination, that's the same kind of report up there too. Uh, and thank you, Jenna, for um, providing that link in the chat for, for the for the report. Uh, all right, any questions? I think there's I have a couple online. of questions. Yeah, sure. So um, do counselors meet virtually with, with students um, if they can't make it to campus? Is there a way to meet virtually? Yeah, definitely. So um, a lot of our counselors are seeing students virtually. Um, and I think, you know, in my case, load, probably about 80, 85 percent of my students are seen virtually. We connect with students through a virtual platform. We do video conferencing. We don't necessarily do uh, telephone calls for counseling sessions um, or mental uh, for, for our sessions, but uh, we do do uh, video conference calls. Um, the platform that we sometimes use could be uh, WebEx or Teams, so it depends on the counselor and what they uh, what they prefer. But yeah, definitely, we we see a lot of our students virtually, and um, I do find that when you connect with a counselor virtually, you're more more than likely to connect with them. Okay, you're more than likely to not miss the appointment because uh, what I've seen is. It's just easier to kind of roll out of bed and connect online than it is to, um, you know, wake up, get ready, get dressed, get in the car, drive to a campus, 
see a counselor for an hour and then go back. That's like a two or three hour ordeal right there. So um, all of our counselors are available to meet virtually. Does it matter what campus if that I go to a counselor for? If I'm assigned an advisor at Central, can I go to an advisor at Southeast if I'm at Southeast more than I'm at Central? That's a that's a really good question. You can go to any counselor, okay? Uh, so we have about 22, 24 counselors, and every one of our counselors has different experiences. So when you go to the counseling web webpage, you can take a look at their bios, take a look at their experience, and whoever you see um, that, you, that you feel a connection with, you can definitely connect with them, send them an email to set up an appointment so it's not location-based, okay? Um, obviously, you know, if you want to meet them in person, you do have to go to their campus. But if you want to meet with them virtually, um, you can meet with any any counselor. Thank you. Is is what they tell you confidential? Are you going to share it if they talk about a professor or a staff member? Are you going to go around sharing it with people? Yeah, so um, all of our sessions, all of our counseling sessions are confidential. Um, per our licensure, we do have to keep confidentiality. We take it a step further. Our system for uh, you making an appointment, with, uh, not you, you, our system that holds case notes and your um, medical files and things like that is separated from the college, okay? So we use an entirely different system that is HIPAA compliant. Uh, HIPAA is the uh, privacy, the, the healthcare privacy um, act. Uh, so it's an extra level of privacy that we provide all of our uh, clients. The only time that we do break confidentiality, though, is if there's imminent harm to yourself or to others, um, and we need to make those connections to a uh, police officer or Harris Health or another community resource so that you can get that help, then um, that's the only time that we would break confidenti confidentiality. But yeah, all of our sessions are confidential. Wonderful. Thank you for your time. This was very beneficial. Y'all do so much. Um, so I really appreciate you coming and giving this presentation today. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, we'll see more of you and do more events with counseling through online. And uh, thank you for coming. And I'm hoping to talk to you soon. And y'all take care and have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.